Let's do something different here today. The thing that is closest to my heart is old school computer games. I have a show over at my Brazilian channel called Izzy Mode that I figured I might as well bring over here. Now about the name, it's a bit of a pun. I suck at video games and the way Brazilians pronounce my name make it sound like easy. So easy mode, they say, is the only way I play video games. It works better in Portuguese, just... Roll the intro! One of the games I like to talk about the most, and in fact, when I started the Brazilian version of this show in the other channel, that's the game I first talked about. I'm talking about The Settlers, or as it is also known, Surf City. Settlers blew me away completely when I first played it. I was used to real-time strategy games at that point. It was my favorite genre. I grew up on Command and Conquer, Warcraft, Starcraft, Total Annihilation. That was my jam when I was a kid, but Settlers was a little bit different. Instead of focusing on building up your economy so you can support the war that you're fighting against your enemies, Settlers was more so about the journey itself, about the economy. See, the way it worked, very interesting. I haven't seen that applied to many games since, and it's kind of a shame because it's very creative. Essentially, you have to develop a chain of industry to support your empire. The way the game starts, you have a little castle, and then you have to build the little house of the guy who's gonna chop trees. If you just start chopping off all of the trees, eventually there will be no trees in your kingdom anymore, and that's when you have to build up the little house of the guy who plants new trees. It's very dynamic, so you have a guy cutting down trees for wood, and a guy planting new trees to make sure that you don't run out of that resource. After the little guy chops down the tree, you have basically a log which is not very useful for construction. So you have to build up a sawmill. And then the little settlers will pick up the log, take it to the sawmill where it will be converted to planks of wood which can then be used for construction. That type of mechanism is the core of the game. So say you want to make bread to feed your miners, which will then mine the resources you need, say gold or coal. So in order to get bread, you have to build a farm. The little guy is going to cut down the, the, the wheat and then it's going to put right in front of the farm. Then another guy has to collect that and take to your windmill, by then hopefully you build one. It's going to take the wheat to the windmill and then it'll be ground into flour. The flour is then taken to the bakery, which is one of the buildings that uses flour. You can also make beer. Bread is then taken over to the miners, who then mine, say, gold. The gold is then taken to a mint, which is mixed with coal, which is also mined, so you also need the food for that. When I explain it like that, it makes it sound very complicated, but that complexity is what makes Settlers very unique. In all other games, it's you just take it for granted that if you have the money, you can build whatever you want, be the the buildings or units. Settlers is not as easy, even if you have the supplies, even if you have the quote-unquote money, you still have to take it someplace to be processed, to be used. If you don't plan out your city well, you're gonna run into certain traffic jams where little guys are not gonna be able to get to the other side with the materials you need. Sometimes later in the game, your kingdom becomes so large that having the one castle centralizing all your resources there makes everything take too long. So you have to build satellite castles, little warehouses to store stuff so that your guy doesn't have to come all the way from the other side to the castle to get resources. Now there is combat, but it's very cartoonish and it's very clearly kind of an oversight. The real gist of the game is establishing these chains of industry to make sure that you're, you're, you're making enough wood and you're turning that wood into planks and you get enough uh, stones for, for, for building and you're sending out the guy who's gonna fish so that you can feed the miners and you're gonna get enough gold to uh, raise the rank of your soldiers. The game is all about that, establishing this dynamic, living, breathing city in a way that even games that are about that don't do as well. In SimCity, which is all about raising your little city, you don't really see things happening. It's just like, oh, a building popped up, a building is now destroyed. In Settlers, you see everything happen. You see the little guys taking resources to one side, and you see the little guy building everything, and if it's he, he stopped, he, the building was interrupted, you see that it's because he's, he's out of wood, and then you have to divert your resources. You have to make sure to have enough wood and send wood that way 
to, to finish a building. So it's very interesting even to just watch. If you're into real-time strategy games, Settlers is a, is, is a visually stimulating game in that regard because you see everything as it's happening. One thing that is unique to Settlers, and I don't know of any other strategy game that allowed for this, you could plug in a joystick to the computer and go head-to-head -head against, in my case, my brother. Now, my brother didn't like Settlers all that much, but I harangued him until he played with me. So the screen was divided into two, and you have you know, your, your city is on one side and the city of your opponent is on the other side. Now, you are screen watching the entire time and I suppose that's okay because the game is so complex that it doesn't really matter all that much if you can see what your opponent is doing. You have to be really good at putting together your city in a way that makes economic sense. That's what I like the most about the game. It's not about just sending the collectors to get this resource and then the number shows up here, now you can build whatever. You have to make sure that those resources make their way back to where they're needed and you have to kind of balance everything out. If you build one thing that is like a common strategy, wheat takes a while to grow and if you're depending on just one farm, your bread production or your beer production is gonna be really slow. So what you need to do is build several farms, three or four, and then build, connect them to a, a windmill that's nearby. And that's the other thing. The geography of your city, you have to take that into account. Because if you build a farm here and a windmill across town, somebody's going to have to take the wheat all the way to the windmill and then back to, say, your bakery. So you have to make sure that things make sense from a geographical standpoint. If you're going to start out another farm, make sure to build, say, a windmill close to that so that things don't have to make all the way back and then you have traffic jams in the little roads. You don't want that. Settlers has always been one of my favorite games ever. I love the pixel art. I love how every little settler, every little profession is very well animated, how they move things around, how you see how the city is doing. If you glance at it, you can pinpoint where there's traffic jams going on and you have to build additional roads and try to manage that. I love how visual it all is. Unlike, like I said, other real-time strategy games, it's just about send a guy there, collect resources, he brings it back, and boom, you can build whatever you want. In Settlers, you could have a lot of resources, but they don't make their way to where they're needed. So it's not just about collecting resources, you also have to manage them in a smart way. Settlers has always been an absolute favorite of mine. There are not that many people that know of it or let alone like it as much as I do. That's one of the reasons why whenever I talk about video games, about old school PC games, be it on my Brazilian channel or now here, Settlers is one of the first games I talk about because I want to expose more people to it. Now there's been countless sequels to Settlers, my favorite one being Settlers 2, the Gold Edition. There was a 10th year, uh, 10 year anniversary edition that came out recently, all 3D graphics. Same game, but the graphics have been spruced up a bit. A great title as well, but the first one, playing on my dad's computer way back in the day, that's what really takes me back. But that is Settlers. Let me know in the comments if you ever even heard of this game, because I feel, I feel lonely. Whenever somebody asks me of my favorite computer games, and I'll say something like, you know, Settlers, I get a blank stares, and that upsets me because you guys are missing out. I was in such a hurry to start editing this video, I forgot to mention one thing. This is not the usual content I put up on my YouTube channel. I'm hoping you guys like it because I intend to talk more about these old computer games I used to love when I was a kid. But I'm not sure if this is exactly your cup of tea. So one way you can tell me that this is, is clicking right here. If I get a decent enough response from you guys, I'll know that you guys want to see more of these videos and I'll make more of these videos. So very simple, just click this, this thing right here. It looks really cool, right? I didn't make it. But it does look cool. All right? I gotta finish the thing. But that's everything for today. I'm Izzy, and I'm done. Settlers or Surf City is a real-time strategy game. Settlers or Surf City is a real-time strategy game. Settlers or Surf City is a real-time strategy game released in 1993. Blah!